What is this garbage you're watching? Hey, I want to watch the, the news. news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of that Gang Stalking Show. My name is Doug. I'm a TI, and I've been one since 2004. Just real quick, get this out there. A lot of people, when they reply to the comment sections of uh, these videos, they keep saying, that Gang Stalking Show. I just wanted to tell you, every video I start with, hello, my name is Doug. My name is not that Gang Stalking Show. If you want to write it out, that's okay, but it just seems a lot like a lot of extra work for nothing. Just say, hey, Doug, I just wanted to tell you blah, 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 whatever. Okay, the topic of this show right now is how to catch undeniable video surveillance footage of actually being stalked or followed. One of the things that I see on YouTube all the time that is really, it, it doesn't produce anything that, that I would say that could would be upheld in a court of law as proof of stalking is, uh, I don't have my camera phone, probably because I don't have one. Oh, here's one that's like five years old. People walking around and capturing footage of what they think is outstanding, high cinematic quality, proof, undeniable proof of being followed. My hair. I'm preoccupied with my balding scalp. Uh, uh, being followed by harassers or the, the people we call gang stalkers or involved in gang stalking, whatever. I watch these videos and I've only seen one where I go, I can see that. I can see where the intent is to follow or to monitor or to spy or to keep someone under surveillance. That is the hardest thing to prove in a video of any sort of criminality whatsoever is intent. If you're taking a video of someone who you think is following you or harassing you, those that video is practically 99.9% .9 worthless. And the reason being is because people who are aware that they're on camera typically will not display the behavior that you're trying to capture. It's like thieves who Maybe they're high and they forget that they're in Walmart and Walmart has a bunch of, you don't have to be high, but going into Walmart and trying to steal food, trying to steal products, there's video surveillance everywhere. They get caught every time. Uh, the main reason why people get caught in uh, surveillance cameras is because the cameras are often really well hidden and people will look around for them and go, I don't see them, but they're there. And when those cameras are hidden like that, you can capture absolute intent every time because the people don't feel like they're being surveilled through a video camera system. But when you get however many people who you think are following you, they come to the gas station or whatever, all you're doing is videoing people in public. It just does not look real. It, I don't see any intent. I watch your video. I think that you're credible except for a few people out there who will just rant about these narcissistic people who follow me around and whatnot. And here's, here's undeniable proof. I, I've got a narcissistic stalker over there. I don't see it. Nobody else sees it. It's a ridiculous video. And if you really, really are serious about this, I wouldn't upload that to YouTube because these people are going to continue to follow you and to continue to, to, to willingly be on, on, on your camera footage because you're looking like an idiot and you have nothing of value to an attorney who otherwise might be able to assist you. Uh, the best way, and I'm going to get into this real quick, the best way to do this, let's say um, you, know, you only get harassed or followed in public only every once in a while. And if you know that's happening, lead them to a place like Walmart or to a place, a big grocery center, like uh, there's different types of uh, grocery stores I, all throughout the United States. I'm, H-U-B is around South Texas. 
In East Texas, we got something called Brookshire Brothers and then Brookshire's, the two are not related. And Super One Foods, but I don't know what they are in other states. I haven't been out of state in a long time. But nonetheless, if you feel you're being followed, don't be in your car, you know, waving at them and let, letting, you, letting them know that you know. Pretend that you're dumb. Always pretend you're dumb and you're just oblivious to what's going on around you. The more so that you behave that way, the more so you'll be able to get these people on camera or capture them. Or, because the more you play stupid, the more they may have to overact their role. And when you get someone overacting or, or overemphasizing, that really captures intent. Whereas, let's say, and I see this all the time, I saw it happen on, on a, like a New Year's video with Anderson Cooper. I don't know if it was this year or last year or something. No, it wasn't a New Year's video. It was Anderson Cooper, and this was after Trump got elected, and he was interviewing someone in New York, and these kids walked by, fake news, fake news. When a camera's on, people are going to act like fools. But when a camera's on and a, a harasser or someone who's keeping you under surveillance is following you, they, they, they may just back off. They may totally back off. And you don't want that. You want to suck them into, the, into this video footage. So let's say you're driving along and you, you just got off work and you, you have no intentions of shopping, but you notice people are following you. Don't freak out, wave at him and go, I'm going to catch you this time. Don't, don't, don't be a fool. Just let them play into this. Take them to Walmart. Walmart have, has security cameras outside as well as inside. They have a camera that catches people that go through that double door and come out of that double door. They can trace these people back to their um, vehicles and to license plates. And the reason I know this works is because I've, I've contacted Walmart about this and I, I, I know how to do it. You go into a store and let's say you don't have, you didn't want to shop in the first place, but you felt like you're being followed and you wanted to test it out. When you get into the store, don't let them know that you know that they're there. All you want to do is just verify, take a quick look, and if they're showing signs of stalking behavior, like looking at you real weird, most stalking behavior really consists, especially in organized harassment, of people trying to actually know that, it's, know that they've got the right person. Because a lot of times these people have only been showed a, a, a video of you or a picture of you and they don't know you. They probably don't know anything about you. They're just doing this for a, you know, a hit of crack, a sack of dope, something like that, maybe a gift card. So what they're trying to do is, is that who I'm supposed to be following? And then once they'll scan you for a while to, 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 to lock onto you to make sure that you're the right target. I've seen this before many times. So once you see that, yeah, that's them. I've never seen them before, but they're displaying that undeniable look of I'm prey. Once you, once you lock onto that, let it go. Don't pay attention to them anymore. Wander throughout the store. Take a shopping basket with you. Either the push kind or a handheld one. Don't go in there and just wander around. Make it look like you're really there to shop, even though you had no intentions of shopping on, on that day. The times that I had been followed into a grocery store or into a bookstore, well, a bookstore really doesn't matter, but into Walmart, the people who were following me they, they never had a shopping basket or, or a shopping cart, either one. Never, never, never. And the second time that I, that I actually caught this on camera was when uh, two Hispanic males followed me for 45 minutes at Walmart. And this is only going to be a quick go get it, get out and go home shopping trip for me. But early in the trip, I thought those guys, they're acting weird and I think they're following me. Well, I didn't immediately just dive into their stalking me mode. I dived into, well, let's see what happens. I was almost through shopping and I decided 
If they are following me, I'm just going to wander throughout the store aimlessly. And if they continue to follow me, they're following me. And I did that. And they continued to follow me, act suspicious. If I ever looked over in their direction, they would quickly turn around and pretend like they were looking at something. There was one time <clears throat> throughout this uh, ordeal where I just left the clothing section and these guys were by a carousel or whatever that is, an oval rack full of shirts in the men's section and I went to the paper section. And there was a partition that had shel shelving on it and it had those little diamond holes cut in to the, uh, to the partition that holds up the shelves. And I took a peek through that and they went from not looking at me to both play on their shirts and then looking at each other and going, and they was looking in my direction, but they could not see me because that hole, that little diamond hole was probably, it was too small for even this pen to go through. So I knew right then and there, these guys are locked onto me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get surveillance footage of this, and I did. This lasted for 45 minutes. That was 35 minutes I did not expect to be there. Here's what you do. You lure them into whatever shopping area you're going to, and you just take your time. Number one, try to take note without giving yourself away. Do they have a shopping basket? Do they have a shopping cart? And the reason these two things are important is because if they continue to wander around the store and they don't have either, and they continue to follow you around without either, that proves intent that they're there, they are there to follow you. But even if they do have a basket and they're following you, it doesn't matter. But if they don't have a basket, it looks even more so guilty than the other. So here's what you do. You finish your shopping. You don't point them out. You don't try to snap pictures of them or anything like that. You just play stupid. For me, that's real easy to do. You pay for your stuff, and then you go to the security desk, not security, but the, uh, the help desk, and tell them, I would like to speak with a member of man management or with the security uh, people here at the store. They'll come out, and they'll talk to you. Don't, don't, don't. Don't say I'm being gang stalked. If you want to be taken seriously, don't even mention that word in public. Don't mention to anyone that you're trying to get on your team like an attorney, security people, a cop, or anybody else. Tell them what's going on. You have a feeling that someone is stalking you, but you don't know who. You don't have to give them instances of, I got stalked yesterday by this group of people in red cars, or I got stalked last week. Just tell them that you have a suspicion that someone is stalking you, you don't know who, and you're trying to gather evidence. Can I have a, a copy of the tape? They're gonna say, no, you need to contact the police department and file a police report. Do that. Follow the police report, and once you do that, they will release the tape. Make sure before you leave there to contact the police or if you contact the police there. Make sure you tell them the time frame that you want. If you got there at three o'clock and you didn't leave till 345, you want the video surveillance from 245 to 15 minutes after you left because these people follow you to the security desk, it's not gonna capture them leaving yet. Chances are that they, they, they may not follow you that far, but if they do, it doesn't matter. There's still cameras on these people while they're within your proximity. You make the, the police report, you obtain a copy of that, and if they, if they give you any, any harassment about that, what I would do, if they go, well, I can't give it to you right now, or if, if they're just trying to be dodgy, which they're not gonna be, just make a real quick written document and write it out and have them sign it saying, my name is blah, 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 blah. I feel I'm being followed. Could you make a copy from this time to this time on this date for me? Have them sign it and keep it. But you really probably don't need to do that. What you need to do after you obtain a copy of that, you need to make multiple copies of that in case any of the data gets corrupted. Um, people used to think that um, Digital uh, data does not get corrupted. It's wrong. I have got about five CDs, DVDs of photographs and whatnot that are dead, and they died within a year after 
excuse me, after, after I made the DVD. Put it on a different thumb drive, two, three different thumb drives, a hard drive, a backup drive. Make sure you got plenty of copies. Next thing that you want to do, we're 14 minutes into this. Next thing that you want to do is you want to contact an attorney. You don't call just any attorney. Look up civil uh, attorneys that, that deal in, in civil cases. And then call them up. Ask them, do you, do you take stalking cases? If they say, yeah, well, check them out. Go talk to them. Once again, if you find somebody that's in civil, that handles stalking cases, do not say the word gang stalking. Don't get into noise campaigns or V2K or electronic harassment. Just deal with the issue at hand and then show them the copy of it if they agree to take a look at it and um, evaluate your case to see if you have a claim. If they agree to it, over a period of time, you can start saying, well, this happened to me, but never, ever, ever get into V2K, your theories about gang stalking, the word gang stalking, because to an attorney, this is stalking. There are different types of stalkers aside from gang stalking. There are uh, revenge stalkers, uh, obsession stalkers, proxy stalkers. In my case, it's a proxy stalker, and that's what my attorney identifies my case as. So that's basically it. That is it in a nutshell. If you really, really, really want something good, and then after you do it, don't upload it to YouTube. This is not for you to get hits on. This is not to prove to the world that you've got evidence on these people. The least these people know about how you're gathering data on them, the better it is for you. Because they will work outside of you to continue there's a wind whipping outside of my house. They will work outside of you or outside the normal parameters that they've been harassing you through to find other ways to do it. You just don't want to post stuff like this online. I've got a lot of data that I am not, this show is never going to ever, it's never going to air on this show. This is personal, private, and confidential as between me and my attorney. Um, that's it. I'm not really going to get, get any further into that. But I want to tell you that if, if you're sick and tired of being harassed, this is a surefire shot method that will gather proof of you capturing video surveillance of idiots following you around. And the more of this that you can get, the better it makes your case. That's going to be the end of the show. Uh, I've got a GoFundMe account. Please, people, donate what you can, a dollar, five bucks whatever you can do. What this does for me and the show is it helps to get the information out there to other people who don't know that the show exists. There is a ton of disinformation about organized community harassment. I watch it every day. Uh, I see delusional people speaking into their cell phones or camera phones. Yeah, the remote neural monitoring me right now and I can hear the cats over there talking in their own language. People, it's stuff like this that discredits our cause. And I am trying to totally just bypass all that nonsense and talk about objective data, not fairy tales, RH blood targeting, uh, reptilian shape shifters, UFOs or the occult or all this other stuff. I'm talking about facts and harassment. And that's what this is. So please donate whatever you can. I want to get a better, better camera because as you see, this is grainy. It's really grainy and I cannot do anything with this. There's no port for me to look into that says, look here to make it look like I'm looking at you and communicating with you. When my eye wants to deviate over here and look at myself and go, God, man, you're an ugly bastard. So please donate what you can. It's to spread the word. Part of the do donations will go to, um, what, what is the deal? Advertisement. I, I want to get the show out there to get more people watching because it's not to make the show big for my ego or anything like that, but I have found so many people that have watched this show I ended up becoming Facebook friends with, and these people enlighten me more than I enlighten them. They provide me with ideas and concepts to come up with better content. 
And every day on Facebook, these people are constantly sharing stuff that I would have never known about. In the past year alone, since I began doing this, information is just blowing up. And it's information that I would not have gathered on my own. It's information that is being shared consistently by a group of people that are in the know and on Facebook. And there are a lot of Facebook, um, uh, what do you call them, groups? like victims of organized harassment and stuff like that that you don't know about. They're constantly asking me to join stuff like that, but I'm really not into that. But it's there if you want to. So if you follow me, you'll find out about it, and that's great. But I'm just asking you to donate so I can get camera equipment. It's at least a decent camera and a good microphone. And I need some way to be able to capture stuff on my screen and be able to edit it and put it into the, the video, like up here in the top corner or something like that. And while I talk about another video that's playing right here, the video here, I can tell you, you now this is what's going on, this is where it went wrong, and this is what you could have done to do it better. That's bad English, bad grammar. But the point is, I'm limited. I am totally limited. I've got a cheap $175 computer, and this is a Samsung Galaxy 5. It's old, it's decrepit, so please help me out. Another thing to help get this show out there, I know a lot of people are not into liking things unless you want to save it for your history or something like that, but even if you don't care to come back and watch the video, please like it. If you, if you like the information, like it, because what it, it sends a message to the YouTube algorithm is that this doesn't matter it's, if it's been, you know, only 500 views, but if 396 views were liked, that is a lot for this, and they all featured it on YouTube, recommended, YouTube shared and like, uh, and different categories on YouTube that this video would never make it into. I see it every single day on YouTube. So share, like, and subscribe. You can subscribe even if you don't care to come back and watch another video for three months later. That subscribe also tells the, the Google, well, Google slash YouTube algorithm that this is worthy content. So, with all that said, that's the end of this show. Please like, uh, share, subscribe, whatever. Don't pay any attention to that. Anyway, that's the end of the show. You guys have a great day. And if, if, if I haven't talked about a topic and you would like to know more about a topic, send me, just comment at the bottom of this video. Hey, Doug, I would like to know more about this or that. And, or what do you, what's your take on this? Could you do a video on that? And I'll look into it and I'll do a video. But please share, like, subscribe, and comment. You guys have a great evening. Goodbye.